Welcome. Hello, Hope TV family. I'm Crystal Jakes, and we are the House of Hope Atlanta. Our pastor is Dr. E. Dewey Smith, Jr., and here we believe that life with God is better in every way, every day. We'd like to first thank our producers, engineers, and the host of behind the scenes staff that make this show possible. Secondly, we'd like to thank you, our Boss Up family, for your support and for watching and rocking with us every week. Because without you, there would be no us. So thank you. Now family, tonight's show is Leadership Tips from Red Lips. And we have an amazing young lady with us tonight. She is a native of Houston, Texas, and is an inspirational speaker coined as the transformational leader. She's an advocate of several leadership, of servant leadership with the ability to transform and motivate executives and entrepreneurs to become fearless, impactful, resourceful, and engaged leaders. She has a seven step system that develops inner power through transformation. She holds a bachelor's degree in marketing from University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and a master's degree in business administration from the University of Nebraska. She also has a doctorate degree in business from Argosy University. She is the founder of the Paint Your Lips Red movement, which is a global platform to encourage, motivate, and empower women to level up their lives as mothers, wives, leaders, and entrepreneurs through the power of a red lip. Boss Up family, please join me in welcoming Dr. Carmetria Burton. Dr. Burton, please say hello to our Boss Up family. Hello, family. Great to see everyone. Happy New Year. Although I know we're in March, it's still appropriate. Thank you for having me. I always enjoy coming back and just speaking, speaking to the Boss Up family. How you doing? Doing very well. We are glad to see you. Now, family, welcome. And right now, I need you to share this video on all of your social media platforms and invite your friends and family to watch and get these helpful tips for business owners and professionals. So let's talk. Are you ready, Carmetria? I am ready. Ready. You got to stay ready, right? That's part of preparation, staying ready. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Yes, 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 yes. So let's start off. Now, I know all about you because we are friends, but why don't you tell our family a little bit about Dr. Carmitri Burton? Wow. So thank you again um, to the family of just inviting me just to share with your congregation and your Boss Up community. So I am um, originally, as Crystal said, originally from Houston, Texas. Um, I grew up a very awkward little girl, right? Um, I used to ask a lot of questions. I talked a lot. Um, I was very, I was always very inquisitive. Um, at the time, no brothers and sisters, only child, and grew up in a very loving, small family. Um, but there were two things that my grandmother always instilled in me, family and community. And the reason I say community, you know, my grandmother's house was always the house where family or friends, if they were going through transition, they could come to Clyde and Dorothy mm -hmm. Walker's house and stay and get a meal, right? So I think it's important to have a community and a tribe of people to support you throughout your journey, whatever that is. So just a little old girl from Houston, Texas. I love to read. I love to travel, although we're not doing any of that right now. Um, and yeah. I love movies and exercising. So that, that's me in a nutshell. Awesome. Awesome. Now tell me, um, has it been hard to find a balance between your work and family life? You know, I would say um, that has been an evolution. Um, very early in my career, you know, entering in corporate America years, years, years ago when I was single, um, I think it was not hard because you were driven by the career, the success of your career. But I think as you mature, your priorities shift, right? Um, families first. When I leave the office, I set boundaries, right? I don't answer business calls after a certain time. And I try to just focus on me, my family, and taking care of myself. You have to set those boundaries because if not, 
you know, you'll wear yourself out, right? You won't be good for your team, for your family, more importantly, for yourself. So I think it's really important to set boundaries and setting boundaries is a part of self-care. And I know that's that's been sort of the buzzword for the last several years. But in order to have effective self-care, you have to set those boundaries. So I would say, you know, Absolutely. as your priority, it's not hard to set boundaries at all. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. You've got to have those boundaries because otherwise everything else takes over. So you definitely got to have those boundaries. You're absolutely right about that. So I know you've been in corporate America for a lot of years, and I know you've come across all kind of leaders. Um, was there someone that you partnered your that you patterned your leadership style after that you'd like to tell us about? Um, you know, I would say not really. Um, I think my leadership style has evolved as a result of the leader that I don't want to be, right? Oh, yes. So yes. when you have those, when you have those experiences, you know what you don't want to be, right? Absolutely. And so I've had mm -hmm. men and women leaders that I've learned the hard lesson from. Um, and so that has sort of evolved me as a leader as to one, what I want to be and what I don't want to be. So I would say, you know, not, not really. It's been sort of, um, a lessons learned along the way. Absolutely. So you would basically say you developed your own style. So that's, that's perfect. You are the type of leader that you want to be and that you love to see. So that's, that's awesome. That's amazing. Now, what are the key characteristics of a great leader? Oh, great question. Huh. So <laughs> I would say, um, you know, and this is probably in no area of, of priority, um, but I would say one, a leader has to listen. Oh, there's an art to listening, right? And when I say listen, don't listen with what you're going to say next. Don't listen with judgment, but truly listen with empathy right? Put yourself in that person's shoes and really try to experience what they're feeling or what they're saying. So listen. The mm -hmm. second thing is, I think you need to be a leader that has emotional intelligence. And what do I mean by that? Sometimes I think as leaders, you can sort of, you know, get caught up on um, anxiety, or not wanting to develop anybody on your team because you think they may take your job, right? You may yeah. feel you know, envious of someone, but being aware of those feelings and put them in check quickly. Because as a leader, you gotta have emotional intelligence and be aware of your emotions, which sometimes can get in the way of you making decisions, right? Or you being fair to your employees. Um, I think also a leader is someone that develops others. You are developing people on your team. You're developing people, you know, to get to the next level. And that says a lot about your leadership. Um, I right. actually have three ladies that worked for me years ago. And now they have moved up the corporate ladder. They started their own business. And I get so proud of them because I think that's as a result of me spending time with them, right? and me really Absolutely. affording them those opportunities to spread their wings. So I think a good leader listens. I think they have emotional intelligence and I think they are very keen on mentoring and developing others. That's, I love that. So my next question is, so you help to transform leaders and help them evolve. So if there are some leaders that are out there that are missing those characteristics that you just mentioned, how do you go about helping them kind of transition into being a great leader leader if they're missing those characteristics that are that that stand out they stand out when you're not a good leader those things stick out like a sore thumb so how is you as the transformational leader how do you help lead those people down the right direction and help to make them a better leader you know you know that kind of gets to are leaders born or are they developed right that's mm -hmm. kind of like a big question that a lot of people talk about. Um, I have a, I think it's a little bit of both. I think as leaders, yeah. when you do want to be better leaders, I do think you seek the help that you need. And so, you know, one of the things that I've done, especially last year in COVID, 
so many people had to transform their leadership style because one, we were working from home, right? Mm -hmm. So many families were losing family members, you know, due to COVID, you couldn't spend time with family. So a lot of people were under stress. And that's why right. being a good listener was very good. So I think COVID has taught us a lot about leaders. The way we do business now is a lot different. But if you really want to really, I would say, level up your leadership, first, I think you need to, one, determine what kind of leader do you want to be? And you need to prepare yourself for that, whether that's coaching, training. Um, you know, we do some some skills assessment, right, to see what where those gaps are in your leadership. Then we set up a strategy, right, as a result of you wanting to be this type of leader. How are we going to get there, right, based on things that we need to do? Then we need to position you as a leader. Right? Are you looking for a job promotion? Is it a leader around a project and, and not necessarily a people leader? Then we talk about collaborating as a leader. Then we talk about the way you communicate as a leader. And one of the ways that I just mentioned of communicating is very good listening. Then we talk about the performance. How are you going to measure this new leadership style? And then you execute. And then we look at right. that seven step process, you know, maybe every three to four months just to make sure that you're on target as being the leader that you want to be or the leader that your people needs. Absolutely. So you just touched on your seven step process. So why don't you number those out for our listeners so that they can take notes and actually write this down because it's going to help somebody going forward. So you got to lay it out for them. What is your seven step process? So first one is preparation, right? Let's prepare you on what type of leader you want to be. The second one is strategy. You always have the strategy going into any type of project or execution. Then we're going mm -hmm. to position you as a leader. Then we're going to collaborate. That's talking to me, talking to your team, talking to other people that you work with to talk about, hey, what type of leader are they really, right? To get that 360 feedback approach. Then we're going to talk about the way you communicate as a leader, and then how you communicate your changes as a leader. Sometimes it's always not the verbal communication, um, but it's those nonverbals that will show that you are looking to level up your leadership. Then number six right. is performance. And then number seven is execute or activate, right? So you go through those six steps, and then you're going to activate on that as a new or different or change leader. I love it. Verse. Perfect. Perfect. So in your bio, you talked about being a servant leader. Break that down for us. What exactly is a servant leader? I'm listening. You know, I, I, think, I think, and listen to it, take note. I think <laughs> I believe a servant leader is just what it says. You're there to serve, right? right? You're there to serve your team. You're there to serve others. You're there to coach, develop, mentor, train, break down barriers so they can be successful. Um, I think that is the mm -hmm. cornerstone of leadership. Now, have I always been a servant leader? Absolutely not. So let right. me be authentic, right? So mm -hmm. early on in my career, and I'll be authentic, it was all about me as a leader. What can my team do mm -hmm. to make me look good, right? I need the team to get us from here to here to make me look good. Me, 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 me. I was a leader. I was in charge. But as you evolve, right. you begin to take your leadership responsibility serious. And you begin yeah. to know that you have a responsibility to serve others. So let's Absolutely. be clear. I was not always a servant leader. But as you evolve, right, that emotional intelligence kicked in then I think you evolve mm -hmm. into a servant leader or the leadership style that best fits you or what you want to be known for. Sir, sir, sir. Absolutely. Serve. I totally agree. Yes, you are a work in progress. And that's yes. that's part of it. It's growing. You know what I'm saying? Growing into the person you want to be, growing into the leader you want to be. So that's an excellent example. Um, now let's get into this red lip. Now, you are the founder of the Paint Your Lips Red Movement. Yes, I'm rocking my red lips today, too. Tell yes. our audience about Paint Your Lips Red. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm getting excited. Your baby. You know how much I'm talking about this. Yes, my baby. 
and my baby <laughs> is four years old now. So it's yes. a toddler. It's a toddler. <laughs> um, and, and the audience should know Crystal was one of my first supporters when I kind of came up with this vision and we did our first photo shoot. So thank you, Sissy, for being there and supporting me um, and just seeing it grow. But essentially, um, we we brought my grandmother and I'll make this story, you know, it's kind of a, I've turned my message into a movement. So we moved my grandmother to Atlanta several years ago before she passed and she was very ill and she came here for us to love on her, to nurse her back to health. And so my family would take turns in taking her to her doctor's appointments, right? So she was on dialysis three days a week. She had doctor's appointments. She had congestive heart failure. And she was just here for us to love on her and to get her back to health, good health and strength. So my day was Tuesdays. Every Tuesday I would go pick Big Mama up, right? We would go to her doctor's appointment, dialysis, come back home, eat every Tuesday. And so this one particular Tuesday, I was there. Hey, big mama, get up. We got a day planned. She's like, okay, baby. She would get out of the bed, go to the bathroom, brush her teeth, wash her face, come back. Before she would take her medicine, she would say, give me my red lipstick. And I went, Ooh. okay, she wants you for appointments. I get it, right? And then I noticed a pattern. She would always ask for that. And I said, you know what? Her red lips is her cape for the day, right? She may not mm. feel good, she may not wanna go, but that lip will let everybody know I'm bold in control and I'm showing up, even when I don't feel like it, right? And so yeah. the pendulum thread movement is not a fashion statement, but it's a call to action for women to yes. stand up, be noticed, be bold, use their voice, even when they're afraid, even when they don't feel like it, your red lipstick is your reminder. And that is your way to get you through the day, to use your voice or whatever it is that you may feel a little small or minimized about. Your red lip is your reminder, but you can do it and you got it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it helps you because it takes a pretty bold woman to put on a red lip because everybody can't do it. And you got to be feeling right. a certain type of way about yourself and your situation to throw on a red lip and step out and make things happen. And when That's you right. accomplish, it makes you feel that much better. Like, yes, I did that today. And guess what? My red lips helped along the way. So I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you. So tell me, um, so what's next for PYLR, Paint Your Lips Red? So as I mentioned, um, it's a leadership movement for women. We've been around for four years. And so what it, what it does is it coaches and trains women on leadership habits to excel them in their career, their business, their personal life, or whatever it is. And so we have coaching sessions every quarter. Um, we also I always invite other speakers to come out and speak. So what's next for PYLR? Um, I am looking for a cosmetic company to support the movement, right? To have a red lipstick possibly named after my grandmother. So when we talk about the PYLR movement, we can have that companion red lipstick to be a part of the movement. Um, the movement is national. I have women in the Bahamas, Canada, uh, Puerto Rico, um, Spain that has supported the movement for the last four years. And so women are just ready to use their voice. They're ready to be noticed. They are ready to get their seat at the table. They're ready to show up and to be counted. And so PYLR is here to stay. Awesome. We've got work to do. We got work. Oh, a lot, a lot. And given Ed, that it is International Women's Month, why don't you tell our viewers, our ladies, or men? You can tell your wives where can they go to sign up, sign the pledge for this Paint Your Lips Red movement. So you can surely go to our website. It's www.paintyourlipsred.com. Um, you're going to see sign the pledge. The pledge is free. All it's asking you to do is to commit to these 10 habits when you sign the pledge. And so you'll get like a pledge. This is the pledge card. You probably can't see it. You'll get something to your email. And all it says is if you sign the pledge, you're committing to showing up. You're committing to practicing self-care. 
You're committing to being optimistic. You're committed to being confident, authentic, support and celebrate other women. You're committing to doing it afraid. You're committing to being poised. You're committing to being spiritual and you're committing to serving. So that's the PYLR pledge, paintyourlipsred.com. I love it. I love it. One last thing. So are there any generic tips you can give the women in our audience without knowing their situation that can help them level up in their lives? Do we have enough time for that? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, this is what I would say. I would say the last several years, it's been time for women to stand up and be noticed. I get it. Everybody's a little different. But ladies, I want you to know and be confident in yourself. Even on those days when you don't feel very confident, right? Things are not going your way. Always start your day in prayer, right? And push through, right? My motto is show up. Because when you show up, you beat mm -hmm. half the competition. That's half the battle. Just showing up, right? Getting out of bed and going to work to a job that maybe you don't even like, right? Um, showing up, right? And the way you show up is one, you got to show up for yourself nobody else is going to show up for you. And then two, how do other people see you show up in the world? So be confident, show up, pray, surround yourself with a tribe of women that will push you in the positive direction, right? So you want to level yourself up. They always say you are the sum of your friends. You want to hang out with people that are doing things, right? Taking care of business, right? Ooh. Moving forward in their business, going back to school, whatever it is, you have to put yourself in positive surroundings and situations because the conversation is different when you hang out with people that has business about themselves, right? So make sure you're in an environment that can really sustain positivity through yourself. Um, right. Um, and then I would also say, uh, think yourself grace. Sometimes we are so hard on ourselves if we don't get the job, if we don't look a certain way, if we don't have the degree. Ladies, give yourself, give yourself a little grace. Don't live your life based on society standards, right? Live your mm -hmm. own life because when you begin to have those pressures, that is when your confidence minimizes. So give yourself a lot of grace, ladies. Set out a plan, right? Put yourself around positive people and have the confidence to execute on whatever that plan is. Absolutely. I totally agree. That was that was awesome. Um, do you have if you could have a conversation with younger Carmetria, Woo! what would you tell yourself? <laughs> uh, younger Carmetria. Um, I would go back and say, you know what? you're going to turn out all right. You really yeah. are, girlfriend. It's going to be okay. It's not. It may not always be what you want, um, but it's going to be okay. Um, yeah. That dream that you had of getting married and having four boys, it ain't going to happen. God had another <laughs> plan, right? But it's, it's still sure. going to turn out okay. God has another yeah. plan for you. Um, I would also tell myself, um, to to be okay with not being perfect but strive for excellence no such yeah. thing as perfection but strive for excellence um and that is okay it's gonna be okay yeah, yeah. That, that's what i would tell my, my younger self for the purposes well, of I this audience Exactly. There's some stuff we don't really want to share, but you know, for the purposes of this, yes, that, that's excellent. That's excellent. Well, I have totally enjoyed this, Carmetria. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. And Boss Up Family, thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you so much. Um, well, until next time, remember, like our senior pastor says, you are good to God. He will be good to you. 
and we want you guys to have an amazing weekend. And Carmitri, do you have any last thoughts for us before we go for today? Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, that's it, ladies, it's your time. Your red lipstick is your reminder, paint your lips red and watch the magic that can happen. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.